Hi, I'm Alistair Benn and you're watching Expressive Photography. In this week's episode, I want to look at uh, something I've developed over the last year or so, which is understanding the emotional fingerprint of our photographs um, and how that changes through processing. It's something that is so important to me is the emotional consequences of what we do to understand that we can express ourselves and articulate meaning and much more than just I was there, this is what it looked like. Landscape photography doesn't have any explicit metaphors built into it. A rock is a rock, a tree is a tree, an iceberg on a beach is an iceberg on a beach. All the meaning and the stories we weave into it are personal to us and we can articulate some of those metaphors through our processing but they're not explicit. So stay tuned and we will take a look at Lightroom at some images and then try and understand how we can determine the feel of our photographs and use that to articulate our metaphors better. So I've just chosen a selection of images here uh, on Lightroom and you can see, you know, that they're, they're quite typically landscapey. Uh, the first one is a seascape scene uh, from back in 2013. Uh, the next was from Jokulsarlen Beach in Iceland uh, when I used to run workshops there quite a lot. And the third one is from the Highlands of Scotland in a blizzard. The fourth one we're going to look at as a worked example and I'm going to show you many different ways that we can change the feel of our photographs to maybe articulate different emotions through careful and thoughtful processing. So if we look at this first photograph, it's quite mysterious. It feels quite mysterious. There's a kind of a dark feel to it. Uh, the rocks are, there's a lot of shadow detail in there. The colours are quite muted. It's not overly saturated. There's a cool feel, but that hint of warmth on the horizon lifts it quite a lot. And this is the first point I want to make, is that the tonality, the, the colour tones of our images have a massive impact on their emotional expression. This generally cool image is always going to feel a bit more subdued, a bit calmer, a bit more mysterious and maybe a bit more thoughtful. And that warm streak on the horizon is a very strong contrast to that and allows us to elevate yeah, because warm colours, especially warm bright colours, are going to make us feel good and feel better about uh, what we're looking at but also what we're experiencing when we're processing the images. If we look at the histogram here, I believe that images have an emotional fingerprint to them and it's very much a function of how the, hist how the tones are distributed. We can see here, if we hover over the histogram, we have our mid-tones, our shadows and our uh, blacks or our dark shadows. And then on this side, we have our highlights and our whites. This histogram is skewed towards mid-tones through to shadows. There's more, uh, there's a bigger percentage of the frame is made up of darker tones and there's very few highlights and very few uh, whites as it were. That tells us instantly that this image is going to feel mysterious, darker, more ominous. It's just a fact of how our visual system works. We get excited by bright and airy colours or bright and, airy, <laughs> bright and airy tones and warmer colours and we get to feel more subdued and melancholy and thoughtful and introspective using cooler darker tones. If we move on to the next image here we can see we have a similar distribution of tones. We have, uh, there is a dark feel to it. You, you know me, an awful lot of my images are darker by nature. Uh, I am naturally introspective. I am naturally thoughtful. Um, I have suffered in the past from being too uh, dark perhaps, um, but there's always hope in my photography. I always use my photography as a metaphor to give me something to hang on to, to give me something to be hopeful for. This is why I started the expressive photography revolution, I like to call it. 
is our photographs have the power to help us express things that maybe we can't express verbally. And I want to come on later to the new Expressive Photography members community, uh, which we launched last week, which has been a huge success. People are loving it over there because it's providing a place where people can articulate and express emotions through their photography and their words that is incredibly therapeutic. So we'll come on to that a little bit later. But for now, there's more highlight tones in this image than there were in the others. The highlights are more eloquent, they're more articulate. And the second thing we have here is we have a very strong foreground that has this incongruous mix of cool colours and um, beautiful sculptured highlights. And this structure on the beach fascinated me. Um, I can't recall how big it was. It was it was probably a decent size, you know, maybe a, a metre to a metre and a half. It was quite a big chunk of ice. And I love this photograph. I really love it. And I remember at the time thinking it was like Cinderella's slipper, you know, the glass slipper that, that the prince had to stick in her foot. And I love that, how we get these... We see something in the landscape and it takes you back to your childhood. Your imagination starts to flow. You suddenly feel uh, fanciful and childlike again and playful and playing with these metaphors. Now, I, I know from my own experience, you know, being a sort of semi-public figure, you know, people know who I am, that I post some images that people just don't get. Whereas I post other images and they're immediately more engaging, immediately more obvious. Uh, this one, the emotional fingerprint of the image, midtones and shadows, it's taking it down. It's making it less exuberant in a way, but we're using uh, the highlights and the contrast between the cooler areas and the warmer areas to create a transition that takes us on a journey. This um, is a, a very different photograph and it's another one of my personal favourites. I've, I've actually printed this a number of times for clients. It's been quite a popular print. Uh, it looks great, huge. But this is where the metaphor takes over from the, the kind of the simple fact of a photograph really. For many people, they're just going to think, well, this is a tree in a blizzard. You know, it's a, an old Scots pine tree. But there's so many different elements in this photograph that create this huge story in my mind. And the image, to me, transcends the subject. I'm using the tree and the atmosphere and the Scottish landscape to take myself on an emotional journey. Now, this is one of the really important things we make photographs for ourselves. We go out into the landscape. We invest time, money, effort, energy, um, some anxieties and fears, you know, expectations of ourselves and our own performance. We go out into the landscape. We put ourselves on the line for what? To make a photograph that somebody else doesn't get, to make a photograph that we love that nobody else understands, to make photographs that are personal and meaningful to us, little diamonds in our life and they go out into the, into the world of social media and they turn into billions of grains of sand that people just ignore. Photography has an incredible benefit to us for our own well-being, being out in the landscape, engaging with the world, switch, switching off the inner monologue, transcending subjects and allowing our fears, anxieties, joy, hope, perspectives on a very difficult world right now, we allow the landscape to articulate those, to externalise them, to give us a fresh perspective. And realistically, the landscape can heal us. And again, I just want to clarify here how the whole thing works on an emotional level. We have a strong subject, a strong recognisable subject, this tree. We anthropomorphize trees all the time. We look in them somehow as if they're human. It's that old Lord of the Rings and Enti type thing. 
where we look at trees as a metaphor. Even Rush on their uh, 1970 album Hemispheres wrote an album called The Trees and used it as a metaphor uh, to talk about equality within society. <laughs> Geek. Uh, so trees are something that resonate with us on a very human level. We can see we have this big tree in the centre and then we have another tree in the background and then this really stark uh, skeletal one up on the skyline there. Again, it's mostly a mid-tone image, actually. There's a few shadows and there's a few highlights, mostly in the snow. And because I'm using the highlights to emphasise the atmosphere, it feels atmospheric. Uh, I could kill those highlights. In fact, I'll just do that. Kill that down and it changes the feel. What I want to move on to next is looking at another photograph and how profoundly we can change the feel of our photographs just by changing a few sliders. This is something I dive into a huge amount in my Dodge and Burn Masterclass and I want to just extend uh, this 25% discount code. It was massively popular the last time I posted it. Lots of people invested in the course. The feedback we get is always positive how it's changed people's perspectives on how to process. So I'm happy to give you another 25% discount off my Dodge and Burn Masterclass. In fact, everything in the store. And you can dive into some of these concepts because they are so important. Changing our perspective from processing mechanically and technically through to processing emotionally and everything we do changes the feel and the articulation of the photograph that we're working on. Every slider that I move in here is going to drastically change the feel of the photograph. And it's up to us to understand those consequences. Let's dive into this photo here. Now, this is the raw file and it's quite old. It's, um, let's see, it was taken in 2015, the 19th of January, 2015. So, you know, it's six years old now, six and a half years old. And to me, it was just, it mirrored a rainbow. Uh, I kind of thought the, the, the curved patterns were, were kind of cool. Something I've talked an awful lot about in the, the Luminosity and Contrast ebook is how geometry, luminosity, contrast shape our interaction with the things that we're looking at. And I think that's a really important way to how we look at the world. And these combinations start shaping metaphors and meaning in ourselves. If I quickly start, now I haven't worked this image before, so this is just all spontaneous. If I flip this image horizontally, the feel changes. We're now got something that very much moves from left to right, taking us into this incredible, almost like a paisley pattern of uh, textures on the right hand side. If I flip it back, you can see how the feel of the image completely changes. And with abstract photographs, I would really urge you to experiment with how they feel differently if we move them around in space. This is essentially the same as I could have turned my camera around. I mean, okay, it's a flipping horizontally is not quite like that. But, you know, we get the idea that, you know, no one's going to know the difference. You can't do this with tunnel view in Yosemite, otherwise El Cap's on the wrong side. I always explore various ways of orientating photographs until I, I hit on one that feels right. And I'm going to go with this upside down version. I haven't done anything to the sliders here, but you'll notice that there's a cool feel to it. Cool ice is a logical thing. What we don't want to do is for it to get too blue because it starts getting unbelievable. But let's never say never. You know, you can do whatever you want. It can be super blue if you feel that you can articulate yourself by being really blue. So let's leave it like this. Changing the white balance will also hugely change the feel of the photograph. So by warming it, it's still blue, but it's now, it's it's less blue, we're warming it up slightly. We can also use our green and magenta, but in this particular case, either of those sliders, I think makes it worse to my mind. 
One of the greatest sliders in the world is the white slider. Because the white slider, I'll just turn on my highlight warning key. I just don't want it to clip too much. But I want those veins of whiter uh, lines to be really, really prominent. The luminosity slider, the white slider, the energy slider, the power slider, as I like to call it, we are drawn inexplicably to the light. The sun comes up every morning and sets every afternoon or evening, unless you're in the Arctic in the winter. But when it arrives, it fills us with joy. Luminosity in photographs will always fill us with joy. It, they always energize us. They always increase the engagement with a photograph, pushing that white slider where appropriate to emphasize the luminosity and the power of the geometry in this particular case is always going to make it feel more engaging. I quite like the overall luminosity of this image. I, I like it brighter. Quite often I do go very dark and if we do so we can compensate with our highlights and whites but you can see what's happened is as soon as we've darkened the image it's saturated. There's a direct connection between uh, how bright an image is and how saturated the colours are. Darken it, they're going to get more saturated. Lighten it, they get less saturated. So I might have to compensate a little bit in there with the white balance slider to take away some of that super coolness. Like I said, in this particular photograph, I think it being not too dark is advantageous. And I'm just trying to create something that is hitting the mark emotionally. Expressive photography is the power to weave meaning and metaphor into our photographs. Every photograph is expressive, whether you think it is or not. And I think the power of expressive photography is to make that a driven thing, to make it a point of our photographs. And we don't have to do it consciously. I'm not processing this particular image with a path in mind or a destination in mind. I'm literally just moving sliders around and exploring, experimenting, playing just as I did when I was three years old with a piece of paper and some crayons. I'm exploring graphics and lines and shapes and patterns and meaning and expression. We lose that as we get older. I've written recently in an article, we learn to be square. Uh, we learn to be sensible. We learn not to be playful. And expressive photography is something that is so important to allow ourselves to be expressive. Um, what I'll do is I'll finish this uh, image a little bit later and we'll put it on a slideshow at the end of the, of the, the video here. Um, I need space and time and maybe stick some music on to immerse myself in this photograph. The new Expressive Photography Members channel, I did announce it last week in a video um, and I know there's quite a few people who were um, um, invested in the old members channel here on YouTube. The new one is a real step up from that. We've taken uh, the concept of just making an extra video every week to producing a forum, a community, somewhere where people can post images. And in particular, we have this expressive self-critique forum. And what that's doing is people are posting their photographs and they're saying why they did it that way. They're saying what the photograph means to them. And the insight that we're getting and the back and forth between the viewers and the original posters are incredible. And we're getting dozens of comments where people are just starting to talk about metaphors and meanings and how to express ourselves. The weekly theme is also being incredibly popular where people get to post different photographs. They express emotions in different ways. Last week we had a joyful um, uh, theme. This week it's all about fear. So if I jump in and have a look at uh, images that represent fear, you can see we've got quite a diverse selection there from various people and they're starting to add little uh, ex explanations of what it is about those photographs that make them fearful. Of course, all the videos that used to be on the members channel 
are on here. So you have access to over 50 videos that we posted over the last 12 months covering all sorts of incredibly educational topics. So I would urge you, if you're interested in taking your photography to the next level, to expressing yourself, to making it more meaningful and finding an audience of people who are going to appreciate that and allow you to express yourself better, then I would strongly urge you to check out the members community. Um, apart from that, that's about it for this week. Like I said, I'll stick the discount code for the Dodge and Burn Masterclass down below and we'll take a look at that icy photograph uh, immediately after I shut up. Uh, I hope you found this useful. Please, please dig into some of our products and the Expressive Photography members community because we're certain that it's going to really, really help you to become a happier, more expressive, more creative and more self-confident photographer. And surely that has to be a good thing. Thank you very much for watching. Do us a favour and hit that like button down below. Uh, obviously, we've been producing less videos lately and uh, YouTube thinks that we're dead. So uh, a little bit of interaction on this video is really going to help us out to let them know that we're not. Have a good week, everyone. Thank you very much for investing your time in this little video that I've made for you. And hopefully it's going to be of some benefit. Thanks for watching. Tune in again soon. Bye for now. Thank mm -hmm. you.